Thank you for clicking on that thumbnail and welcome to this part 2 of the question paper approaches and analysis higher level paper 1 November 21. If you like this video please click on that thumbs up icon and uh, subscribe to my channel to motivate me to make many more videos like this. Question number 7. The equation 3px squared plus 2px plus 1 equal to p has two real distinct root. Okay. Two real distinct root. What does that mean? Distinct root. That means the discriminant b square minus 4ac for a quadratic equation will be greater than 0. That's what it means. Find the possible values. That's why they're saying possible values of p because it is greater than 0. That means many values are possible. And let me do it here. First, let me uh, uh, collect everything to the left side. So 3p x square, it is alone. 2p x is also alone, coefficient of x. But 1 and minus p are both constants, so we'll collect them. So this becomes b, this becomes a, and 1 minus p becomes c. And we have to Put it like this. So b square, which is 2p square whole, minus 4 times a times c. This has to be greater than 0. So this becomes 4p square minus 12p. Yeah, these two make 12p. 12p times 1 will be 12p. Minus 12p times minus p will be positive. 12p square greater than 0 no constant left that's good part so 4 plus 12 is 16p square minus 12p has to be greater than 0 let's take a 4 common 4p rather common in this so we are left with 4p minus 3 greater than 0 so if we look at these two factors we get two roots that means the point where this, if it was an equation, would cross x-axis. So 4p equal to 0, that is 1, and 4p minus 3 is equal to 0 is second. So this gives us p equal to 0, and this gives us p 4p equal to 3, and that means p is 3 fourth. These are the two roots. Now, we have to find the possible values of p, that means there will be a range. If I draw the graph of uh, let's say p and uh, some variable here y because we don't this is not a function so I'm saying just y okay if p equal to 0 is one of the roots that is here 3 fourth is suppose here and the leading coefficient 4p rather 16p square is positive that means our graph will look like this and we want the values of this whole thing which we have called y right now to be e greater than 0. So it is greater than 0 in this part and this part. So we got our two answers. One is that p is less than 0 and second is p is greater than 3 fourth. These are the possible values of p. What about next one? Consider the case when p is 4. So they have taken the value 4 which is somewhere on the right side of this 3 fourth. Okay? The roots of the equation can be expressed as this, where uh, a, this a, is an integer. So find the value of a. All right. So they have fixed now p is equal to 4. So uh, the main equation was this one. I will substitute p equal to 4 here. So 3 times p is 4, x square plus 2 times 4x plus 1 minus 4 is equal to 0 that makes it 12 x is square plus 8x minus 3 is equal to 0 and now they're asking us to find the roots and express it like this so again we'll use quadratic formula for this which is minus b plus minus b square minus 4 ac over 2a since 4 is on the right side of uh, 
three fourth and which is part of our answer that means we will get two answers that there is no need to check just substitute the values of a b and c in this case here this is a this is b and this is c so we get minus b plus minus b square minus four times a and minus three over 2a so minus 8 plus minus 64 okay 4 times 12 is uh, 48 48 times 3 will be 144 so plus 144 because we have two of them 2 times 12 so 144 plus 64 will be 208. Yep. Okay, and uh, 24 here. Can you break? Because our target is to get 13. Yeah, and if I divide 208 by 13, you can use your calculator. I'm just doing mental math. So times 1 is 13. Okay, 16. 13 times 16 is... 208 minus 8 plus minus 13 times 16 over 24 and let's complete it here minus 8 uh, plus minus square root 16 is 4 square root 13 is square root 13 we'll write it here over 24 now if I divide numerator by f they want positive no they just want a okay so by 4 and divide this also by 4 what do we get minus 8 divided by 4 will be 2 negative 2 plus minus 4 divided by 4 is 1 so we'll re left with only square root 13 divided by 24 divided by 4 6 and square root 13 is matching 6 is matching and a we got equal to minus 2 which is an integer let's move on to question number eight question number eight says solve the differential equation this x is greater than zero given that y equal to four at x equal to okay they have given this so that we get the value of c later on give your answer in form of y equal to fx all right so our question is dy over dx equal to natural log of 2x over x square minus 2y over x to solve a differential equation the rule is that dy and dx both must be numerators and with their respective variables the variable here is x so it has to be with x this is y it has to be with y but the problem is that we have a negative here so we cannot just cross multiply and bring dx up so the best thing will be that we take care of the denominators let's multiply whole equation by x square so x square dy over dx equal to and this x square will get cancelled with x square we'll be left with only linear natural law of 2x minus 1x will cancel with one of the x's so 2x y and let's bring it to the left side if we get 2xy plus x square dy over dx equal to natural log of 2x now if we look here this part is differentiation of this part and this part of the other one is differentiation of this with respect to x that means if we want to go back on product rule we can do that so what i mean to say is this if i say x square y i want to differentiate it with respect to x so according to product rule i will first differentiate x square which is 2x but i will not touch y in second x square will remain x square but we will differentiate y with respect to x which is dy over dx i can you see it is exactly same which means i can substitute this with x square y prime yeah now to get it a prime we have to this is prime means differentiation okay so we'll have to integrate both sides with respect to x and 
uh, if I write here, so this differentiation and integration cancel out and we are left with just x square y equal to natural log of 2x, its integration. Now we have to integrate just the right side and our job will be done. But the problem is it is natural log. Uh, we cannot do it directly. What we will have to do, we will have to add one, not add, multiply one with this so that it becomes an algebraic part and a logarithmic part. And we can use our hierarchy of integration in uh, integration by part. So we have a log here, which is u. And we have algebraic part 1, which is v prime, right? And we know that the integration of uh, u v prime is u v minus u prime v according to integration by parts. And that's what I'm going to do now. So u v prime is there. I will just find somehow these and I will write my answer. So u we have already assumed u is lin 2x. So Now we need v. We don't have v. We have v prime, which is 1. Let me do one more rough work here. So v prime is 1. That's what I have uh, assumed. So integration of this will be integration of this. So v is integration of 1, which is x. So in place of v, I will write x, which I will write in front here. Minus integration of u prime. We have u, but not u prime. So we will do the opposite here u is lin 2x so u prime differentiation of this will be 1 over 2x multiplied by differentiation what is inside 2 so 2 and 2 cancel 1 over x that's u prime and v we already got in previous part x so x and x cancel we got our integration of u v prime will be equal to x ln t x okay minus integration of 1 is again x plus c this is what our right hand side we now so x square y is equal to x natural log 2x minus x plus c and to find c they gave this value here y is equal to 4 when x is half and that's what I'm going to do here. X is half. So when X is half, Y is 4. So 1 over 2 square times 4 equal to 1 over 2 natural log 2 times 1 over 2 minus 1 over 2 plus C. And we'll get C in this case. So 1 over 2 square will be 1 fourth. So 1 fourth and 4 cancel. We just get 1 so let's complete it here 1 equal to half this 2 and this 2 cancel so natural log rather log of any 1 when the content is 1 is 0 that means this is gone so minus half plus c let's bring half with 1 which will be equal to c so c comes out to be 3 over 2 so we got our final final a combination of equation from here x square y was equal to uh, we got this x lin x right x uh, lin 2x minus x plus c and now plus c is 3 over 2 but the requirement was that y should be alone that means we have to get rid of this x square divided by x square and x square so finally this cancels and we get what y equal to this x cancels with 1 of the x so len 2x 1 over x minus this cancels here minus 1 over x plus 3 over 2x square this is the final answer okay what is the next one consider the expression this all right where a is a rational number the binomial expansion of this is ascending powers of x as far as the term x square is equal to this find the value of a and b 
basically expand this okay so uh, what will we do we will first write them properly so can i write this as 1 plus ax to the power negative half minus 1 minus x to the power half and now we have to expand this one this one i will expand first 1 plus let's focus on this only so what is this equal to uh, 1 plus nx okay do you need formula for this i don't need but let me see if i can get formula for you okay so we can write this as 0 equal to let's take minus a common here so we will be left with how much 3a plus 1 okay so now since it is equal to 0 either this minus a is equal to 0 which gives us a equal to 0 but uh, if you look at your question they clearly say that a is not equal to 0 look here a is not equal to 0 so this answer has to be rejected that means this will give us the second answer 3a plus 1 is equal to 0 where a is equal to negative 1 over 3 this will be value of a and let's use uh, let's use this one to get b 8b equal to 3 a square plus 1 so 8b equal to 3 times 1 over 9 plus 1 this goes and cancels here this is 3 so 8b equal to 1 third plus 1 is 4 third and divide this by 8 divide here also by 8 so what do we get 4 and 8 cancel so we get b equal to 1 over 6 this is the answer b is 1 over 6 a is negative 1 over 3 and uh, let's find the second answer what is the uh, b part of this state the restriction which must be placed on x for this expansion to be valid and this is the restriction if you can see absolute x is less than 1 for this 1 plus x to the power n but we don't have we have something different here we have 1 plus a x so in this case it will become a x less than 1 a we just got negative 1 over 3 x is less than 1 and if I cross multiply it comes negative x is less than 3 3 multiplies here with 1 or we can write absolute x is less than 3 but in the same uh, function or same expression we have another situation which is 1 minus x and here it will become minus x less than 1 and because of absolute we can write absolute x less than 1 so positive uh, x positive part is less than 1 or less than 3 which is common in 2 because if on number line 1 is here 3 is here 1 is less than 1 1 is less than 3 that means this is the area which is true for both so we will write finally the answer absolute x is less than 1 this is the restriction a particle p moves along x axis so suppose this is x axis the velocity p is v meters per second okay at time t seconds where this is t this is the equation for velocity between 0 and 3 so this is 0 1 2 3 up to here this is the equation when t is equal to 0 p is at origin o that means this is origin all right find the value of t when p reaches its maximum velocity to find the maximum or minimum of any any variable we should first differentiate it so v prime t we have to find out what is differentiation of 4 0 no need to write differentiation of 4t is 4 minus differentiation of 3t squared 6t 
right this has to be equal to zero for maximum velocity there's nothing about acceleration we can write at here if accel when acceleration is zero the velocity will be maximum or minimum but since they're saying maximum we'll get just one answer here which will be minus 60 equal to negative 4 so t is negative 4 over negative 6 which is 2 over 3 seconds at 2 over 3 seconds sub, oh, so, somewhere here the velocity is maximum and we'll find what is that velocity now so v2 over 3 will be 4 plus 4 2 over 3 minus 3 2 over 3 square so it comes out to 4 plus 8 over 3 minus 4 times 3 12 over 9 okay which will be by the time i use my calculator i will request you to click on that thumbs up icon if you like this video and subscribe to my channel to motivate me to make many more videos like this my subscribers are increasing very at a very low pace so if you subscribe i'll get motivated so thank you what i got on my calculator is 16 over 3 meters per second this is the maximum velocity show that the distance of p from o at this time is this that means they are saying this distance from here to here is 88 over 27 that's what we have to uh, find so for finding displacement from uh, vt equation we have to integrate so we will integrate 4 plus 4t minus 3t square with respect to time it will be 4t plus 4 t square over 2 minus 3 t cube over 3 plus c and time is from 0 to uh, 2 over 3 yeah 2 over 3 so let's substitute 4 times 2 over 3 plus this can cancel 2 times 2 over 3 square 3 and 3 also cancel minus 2 over 3 cube 2 over 3 cube yeah yeah uh, plus c minus and if i substitute 0 it will be 0 this will be 0 this will be 0 and c will cancel with this c so 0 plus c there's no need to write all of them just put this in a calculator and definitely definitely you are going to get 88 over 27 let me also verify this yes it is p part sketch a graph of v against t clearly showing any point of intersection with the axis all right so we got maximum velocity at 2 over 3 so if this is t this is v uh, let me rather make it little expanded so 2 over 3 is somewhere here this will be 1 somewhere here and we have maximum velocity here suppose this is the maximum velocity which we got as 16 over 3 and at 2 over 3 we got this one okay now it's a quadratic can you see it's a quadratic uh, velocity quadratic well that means our and the leading coefficient is negative 3 if you see the coefficient of t squared is negative 3. that means it's opening up and uh, it will open like this but we need to know what are the x intercepts for that what will i do i will just make this equation equal to zero and see what are the x intercepts for this 2 and minus 2 over 3 so minus 2 over 3 will be somewhere here and we don't we can't show beyond negative side but 2 will be the other one so the graph will be some something like this if i try to make a parabola from here and this is 2 here and this at 0 time equal to 0 what is the velocity we can substitute 0 here in this 
So this will be zero. So four plus zero plus minus zero will be four meter per second. So this is four when it is crossing the intercept. This becomes the graph of Vt. All right. Find the total distance traveled by P. So basically, distance can be found by finding the area of this. Actually, if you notice, they have written zero to three seconds. That means we have to move up to three seconds. So let me draw it further. So of course, it will be a parabola which will be going further. Suppose this is here and we have three here, suppose. So that means we have to find this area as well. And what are they saying? Are they saying distance or? Yes, they're saying distance. That means we have to find this area separate than this area. Of course, this area will be negative, but we will have to uh, absolute it, find it, make it positive and add. So let's do that one. We have already integrated uh, the curve, which is uh, here. This is the one, right? So we'll just use from uh, zero to two, th this two, yeah, zero to two first. So 4t plus uh, 2t square minus t cube plus c from 0 to 2. And then we will find again same 4t plus 2t square minus t cube plus c from 2 to 3. And we'll absolute it. So let's do this one first. Substitute 2 first. So 4 times 2, 2 times 2 square minus 2 cube plus c minus and 0 we already found it was 0 plus c. So uh, this will be 8 plus 8 minus 8 plus c. Okay c is got cancelled out. So and this 8 is also cancelled out. So we have got just 8 meters. This distance traveled in this time from 0 to is 8 meters. Let's see what is here. So 4 times 3 plus 2 times 3 square minus 3 cube plus C minus, and we just got it, 8 plus C. Cancel C. Just a formality, okay? 12, okay, let me write here. 12 times 9 times 2, 18 minus 27 minus 8. So how much is that? 12 plus 30, 30 minus 27 is 3, 3 minus 8 is negative 5. We got a negative distance, of course. So they are saying, what is the total distance? So we will write total distance traveled is uh, 8 meters plus absolute of minus 5, which is 13 meters. That's the answer. What next? Question number 11, which is mathematical induction. Prove by mathematical induction that the nth derivative of x squared is power x. For this is true and uh, we have to prove this and n is integer. Okay, so let's do the a part first and let's start it here. So first, let's verify for uh, n equal to 1. So d over dx, x square e to the power x equal to uh, x square plus 2 times 1, x plus 1, 1 minus 1, e to the power x. This should be true. So x squared plus 2x and 1 minus 1 is 0 e to the power x. This is what we should get from first derivative. Let's find the derivative, the actual derivative, which is which should be equal to this. So x squared e to the power x and I'm differentiating it. So I'll use the product rule x square is x square e to the power x is differentiated so we get this plus 
the e to the power x remains e to the power x but this will be differentiated which will be x square differentiation of x square is 2x so if i take e to the power x common from here x square plus 2x and yes it is exactly same as this so it is true for n equal to 1 now we will assume that uh, n is some random number k okay k is an integer that's what they're saying positive integer that is so let's substitute it here so dk over dx to the power k yeah i'm using this the one it they have given in the a part so it's of x square e to the power x has to be equal to x square plus 2kx plus k k minus x k minus 1 e to the power x okay now for same uh, k if i take k plus 1 now what is i what do i get so let me complete it here so d k plus 1 over d x to the power k plus 1 of x square e to the power x has to be x square plus 2 k plus 1 plus k plus 1 k plus 1 minus 1 e to the power x okay so it has to be x square 2k uh, I didn't write x here 2k x plus x and 1 minus 1 cancel it will be k k plus 1 e to the power x that's it so let's see if if we actually differentiate it once more after it because this is dk over dxk right so if I differentiate this one, I should get something like this. So let me do it. Uh, D k is here. I am doing D k plus one now. Actually, so it will be. Uh, they are multiplying again. This whole thing is multi. Let me change the color. This whole bracket is multiplying with this. So I will use product rule. So I will first write the same thing x square plus 2kx plus k k minus 1 and I differentiate e to the power x only this one so e to the power x will be here but second part e to the power x will remain same but I will differentiate what is inside here what will that be 2x if I differentiate this 2x then 2k and since they are constant nothing right this will be the differentiation actual differentiation of this and let's see if i simplify this do i get what i got in this case so e to the power x is in both let's take e to the power x common so i'll take x square plus 2kx plus k k minus 1 from the first one and then we get 2x plus 2k and no zero from second one so let's see what do I get x square plus 2kx I want 2kx I want yes it 2kx I want so let's write 2kx then I want x but I have 2x here and actually this 2 and x will also give me 2x so my mistake in this one so it will be 2x got it then uh, we will take k common from this and this so let's take k common so i read i'm writing k minus one from here and two from here so e to the power x x square plus 2k x plus 2x and this will be plus one so plus k k plus one exactly what we got through the formula and this is actually we got by differentiating once more so yes it's uh, true for k 
k and k plus 1 hence proved okay b part hence or otherwise determine the maclaurin series for fx equal to this in ascending powers of x so we have to find maclaurin series using this one so i will use it here let me do it here okay so or let's move the question here so what does maclaurin series says it says that fx is equal to f0 plus x f prime 0 plus x square over 2 factorial f triple prime 0 and plus x cube over 3 factorial f 2 3 and uh, 0 and so on okay so they're saying ascending powers of x up to and including x to the power 4 so let's see where we go so first we need f0 f0 which will be a 0 to the power 2 e to the power 0 yeah this is our fx if i can show you this one is fx so f0 is this which is 0 okay next to f first derivative 0 and we got uh, this in previous part if you remember let me show you we got it here first derivative e to the power x x square plus 2x so e to power x and then x square plus 2 times x which is again 0 let's do second derivative now second derivative we did not find but we know that this is true so now we will use this one okay so it will be x square rather we have x is 0 right 0 square plus 2nx plus 2 times 2x plus 2 2 minus 1 e to the power x so what does this give this is 0 this is 0 it becomes 2 times 1 2 2 e to the power x so no x yet third will be 0 square plus 2 times 3 times 0 plus 3 minus 1 e to the power x so it is 0 0 2 3 times 2 6 e to the power x so we need cube also so we need fourth will be 0 square plus 2 times 4 times 0 plus 4 4 minus 1 e to the power x so 0 it becomes 12 e to the power x 12 e to the power x let's do it here okay so fx now finally will be equal to f0 0, 0 and f first prime is also 0 and then we have x square over 2 factorial which is 2 f second derivative is uh, we should have gotten an okay yes we should have put 0 here 0 0 so e to the power 0 is 1 so it is just 2 e to the power 0 is 1 so just 2 here then plus x cube over 3 factorial which is 6 and uh, this will also be just 6 this is equal to 6 this is equal to 2 equal to 12 so 6 and then we have plus x to the power 4 over 4 factorial which is 24 times 12 and up to x4 we want so 2 and 2 cancel 6 and 6 cancel 12 and 2 cancel yeah so it is x square plus uh, x cube yeah plus uh, this 2 is there half x to the power 4 this is fx according to Maclaurin series okay what is the next hence or otherwise 
determine this limit and uh, we can do that here let me copy that one first so limit x is going to 0 approaching 0 x square e to power x minus x square cube over x to power 9 so if we substitute 0 here it will be 0 over 0 which is not acceptable in limits so what should we do let's rechange this limit x is approaching 0 and make it whole bracket so that we are we can cancel out something e to power x minus x square over x cube what I am doing there now this 9 I am breaking into two parts cube and cube of whole of it so it will be easy to uh, evaluate this now and we already know that this x square e x which is x we this we will just substitute this one so it will be limit x is approaching 0 and in place of x square e to the power x we can write x square plus x cube plus half x to the power 4 and there will be many more after this but I'm not going to write them because they are useless you will understand very soon minus x square was there so over x cube and then we have power 3 yeah power 3 is unaffected okay x square and x square cancel and now we can write a limit x approaching 0 x cube over x cube I'm separating them minus 1 over 2 x to the power 4 over x cube I separated them and now if it was x to the power 5 x to the power 6 x to the power 7 if it was after that it would remain happen same thing to them like it will happen here and what will this happen this and this cancel so in that case what will happen limit x is approaching 0 this will be 1 this x cube cancels with 3 x's so it will be minus x yeah so if it was x to the power 5 after that that will be x square x cube it will continue after that but since they have asked us to write up to x to the power 4 that is the reason they have asked us to stop at x to the power 4 because the same thing will happen with all the terms after this there is no need to write it now substitute x equal to 0 so it becomes 1 minus 0 which is 1 this is the limit okay what next next is about complex numbers let me move it here okay it says consider the equation this where uh, z is a complex number the roots of the equation are these and uh, the imaginary part of w2 is positive and imaginary part of w3 is negative so part a uh, part one says verify that this is a root of the equation if some complex number is root of this equation if i substitute this in place of z it must satisfy the equation that's what should happen so a part 1 I am substituting in place of z this z let's write 1 plus e to the power 1 plus e to the power i pi by 6 right and there is minus 1 also so this was z then minus i and this cube here and it is, should be equal to i so this one and this one will get cancelled out so we are left with only e to the power i pi over 6 power cube it should be equal to i and uh, this 3 and when there is an exponent of exponent they multiply so let's multiply them e to the power i pi by 6 multiply by 3 and this 3 cancels with this so we are left with what e to the power i pi by 2 is it equal to i let's see let's convert it to modulus and argument format uh, which will be cos pi by 2 
plus i sine pi by 2. Cos pi by 2 is 0, so gone. i will be i, and sine pi by 2 is 1, and yeah, which is equal to i. i is our right hand side, it is equal, so we verified. Okay. Find w2 and 3 expressing those in terms of this. Okay, so if we know that this is, uh, not this, uh, where was it? This, 1 plus i pi over 6. If this is one of the roots, that means the other two roots will also be same. So if we see the argument of this, this particular complex number is pi by 2, which is here, right? This is pi by 2. So next root will be when this goes and comes back at this one, which is uh, basically 2 pi added. And third, we can get again add 2 pi, that is add 4 pi to this and we'll get w2 and w3. So for w2, we will write that z minus 1 cube is, uh, it was e to the power i pi by 2. So the next one will be e to the power i pi by 2 plus uh, 2 pi after one full circle. So if I want to get rid of this cube to get this z as w2, I will cube root both sides. So I will give power one third to this side and one third to this side as well. So we are left with only z minus one here because three and one third will cancel out equal to e to the power i and this one third will make it what? Uh, pi by six plus two pi by three. Yeah. If this one third multiplies with this whole of it, this is what it will be and uh, let's simplify this z minus 1 equal to e to the power i if i make this also 6 by multiplying by 2 you can use your calculator if you are not sure what i'm doing here so 6 is the denominator now so 2 times 2 pi times 2 is 4 pi plus pi 5 pi by 6 this is uh, uh, z minus 1 so z which is w2 will be this minus one will come here so it becomes one e to the power i five pi over six and plus one this is the second root similarly we'll find the third one also so for w3 it will be z minus same same process we'll repeat i'm doing it fast now but this time it will be 4 pi. One more circle we will go ahead and one third. So three and three one third cancel. So z minus one in this case will be e to the power i pi by six again, but plus four pi over three. So I multiply by two, multiply by two, eight pi plus pi, nine pi z minus 1 is e to the power i 9 pi over 6 again bring this here so w3 will be z equal to e to the power i 9 pi over 6 plus 1 this is third root so these are three roots one root was already given to us okay the roots w1, 2, 3 are represented by point ABC respectively on argon diagram. So we need to draw an argon diagram and plot ABC on the argon diagram. So let me first plot it fast means I will cut this video and plot them and then I'll explain how I got them. And here it is. You can see here I have done some calculations here and I have shown those uh, roots here w1 w1 is a w2 is b wc w3 is c let me show uh, let me explain w1 and w2 you'll understand w3 so w1 
W1 was this was the root which they have given in the equation also here in the question number A uh, part A part 1. So I converted this this part into argand format. So it becomes cos pi by 6 plus i sin pi by 6 and there is a plus 1 extra so I wrote plus 1 extra. Cos pi by 6 is square root 3 over 2 and uh, sin pi by 6 is half and this is plus 1. So this becomes the imaginary part and these two together become real parts. If you uh, add 1 and square root 3 over 2 it is almost 1.866 so 87 I can write. So real part is 1.87 and imaginary part is half and that's what I've done here. This is 1. 1.87 will be somewhere here I have uh, assumed and it is half here. That's why W1 A point, A point comes out to be here. Now similarly W2, W2 was e i to the power 5 pi over 6 plus 1. This is what we got here. That I interpreted first I completed this, uh, converted this into argand format. So cos 5 pi by 6 plus i 5 pi by 6 plus 1. Cos 5 pi by 6 in this case is minus square root 3 over 2. It was plus, here it is minus. And same thing here. 1 minus square root 3 over 2 is about 0 0.13 something. 0 0.13 will be here on real real part it will be here and again half is the imaginary part so this becomes w2 similarly w3 came out to be minus i plus i so real part is one imaginary part is negative one that's why this became the uh, third side the third point which is w3 this is the root third root that's how i showed them on argon diagram Let's see what is the C part saying. They're saying find AC. AC means they mean find this distance. AC. And uh, because it is AC, head is there in this direction. So I can treat it as a vector. In vector, we always subtract the tail from head. That means if I subtract W1 from W3, it will give me AC, the vector AC right so let me do that here so what did we get as the w3 is the head w3 this one so uh, 1 minus i this is w3 uh, let me write here w3 minus w1 i want okay so minus w1 w1 we got as square root 3 over 2 plus 1 plus i 1 over 2 this we have to simplify and they are asking find AC means the length of AC. We'll find the magnitude of that. So what does that become? Let me open this one. 1 minus I minus square root 3 over 2 minus 1 minus half I. So 1 and minus 1 cancel out and I and minus half I will give me this minus and minus both are negative right yeah so it will be minus 3 over 2i the simplification of this and this and then we have minus square root 3 over 2 this is if I call it vector AC and now I have to find its magnitude will be a square root minus 3 over 2 uh, r square is it negative this is minus this is minus and this is also minus okay so plus square root negative square root 3 over 2 but square will make it positive so don't bother about negative so what do we get here this will be 9 over 4 plus this will be complete 3 over 4 Okay, so we get square root 12 over 4, which cancels out 3. Answer is AC is equal to square root 3. This is the final answer. The length of AC is square root 3. Okay, let's go to the next question. Consider the following equation. Okay, the difference is that 
it's i z cube on the other side okay it's not the same equation it's different show that alpha is a root of this equation this one is the root of this equation okay so z minus 1 q i z cube z this d part is it d or c d z minus 1 cube equal to i z cube so let's divide both sides by z cube so that i can merge these two that is the plan so uh, it becomes z minus 1 over z and then whole cube because both are cubes so i can merge them and write cube once here z cube cancels and it equal to i and i was already known to us which was what we got i here e i not this one e i pi over 2 this one came out to be i so i can replace e to the power i pi over 2 so this i can be replaced by uh, let me this e to the power i pi by 2 so i replaced by its value and now just like the one of the parts i did earlier i will cube root this side to get rid of the cube one cube third so this three and one third cancel so we are left with z minus one over z equal to e to the power i pi over six yeah pi by two multiplied by one third is pi by six but they said alpha is a root of this so if alpha is the root it will satisfy this equation so if alpha is a root so we will substitute alpha here alpha minus 1 over alpha equal to e i to the power pi over 6 and alpha over alpha minus 1 over alpha equal to e i pi over 6 alpha over alpha is 1 minus 1 over alpha equal to e i pi over 6 let's bring 1 over alpha here and this e exponential part here 1 minus e to the power i pi over 6 equal to 1 over alpha and now we have to isolate alpha this let's see what is in the question we have to prove that alpha is equal to so we have to isolate alpha in this particular equation so let's cross multiply means let's bring alpha to this side and e whole of 1 minus e to the power i pi by 6 here so alpha equal to 1 over 1 minus e to the power i pi over 6 and this is what they wanted us to prove let's see what next determine the value of real part of alpha okay so one minus okay we have to find the real part of this alpha now and we know what is the value of e to the power i power 6 we did it already let me show you here it was here somewhere yeah square root 3 over 2 plus i half i this is what it was there so let me do it so uh, e part alpha equal to 1 minus square root 3 over 2 let me put this in bracket plus half i this is the value of alpha but it is not in the format that we can say that this is the real part and that is the imaginary part so what we can do we can uh, rationalize the denominator let's combine the real parts first so 1 over 1 minus square root of 3 over 2 plus not plus minus because this negative will affect this plus also minus half i this is real part and imaginary part of the denominator separated now we will multiply it by the conjugate so 1 minus square root of 3 over 2 
plus half i over 1 minus square root 3 over 2 plus half i okay so this is a minus b and a plus b format if you know a plus b and a minus b is equal to a square minus b square that is the essence of rationalizing the denominator so the denominator now becomes square of 1 minus square root 3 over 2 square plus half i square and not plus it will be minus it will become plus later because of this i but yeah now uh, 1 multiplied with this will be same 1 minus square root 3 over 2 plus half i and we need to find the real part right we have to find real part of alpha okay so where focus should be real part let's see what is the square of this one it is a uh, 1 plus 3 over 4 minus 2 square root 2 over square root 3 square root 3 only and then it become plus because of i square this i square will become plus and 1 over 2 square is 1 over 4 good now what is on top nothing same thing 1 over square root 3 over 2 plus half i okay now 3 fourth and 1 fourth are full 1 and plus 1 will be 2 so denominator becomes 2 plus 2 minus yeah minus minus square root 3 over 1 minus square root 3 over 2 plus half i and again it's a third form in the denominator we cannot give the answer like this so we'll have to again rationalize it by conjugate of this third and again we'll use the same thing again so denominator becomes 2 square is 4 minus square root 3 square is 3 and 4 minus 3 is 1 gone denominator will go but I have to multiply this 1 multiplied by 2 plus square root 3 then minus 3 over 2 times 2 will be minus square root 3 then minus uh, square root 3 times this will be complete 3 over 2 negative 3 over 2 then imaginary part this will give us imaginary part right if I multiply with these two I'm not interested in imaginary part at all because they're asking real part only so whatever is imaginary part I don't bother okay here they cancel out 2 minus 3 over 2 is half denominator is 1 so don't write it that's it this is the real part real part of uh, alpha is half rest was the imaginary part I didn't bother so this is the answer of E part.